Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Sophie Maas. I'm an employment lawyer at Kleis and Engels and the Belgium law firm of Youth Laboris. And I'm very happy to be here today with a new share that we have in our diversity and inclusion group, Aldo from our Italian law firm, uh, Toffoletto. And as April, as I've learned today from Aldo, is again the month where Italian employers must report on the gender pay gap. Today, we thought it was a good idea to have a little talk about the gender pay gap in Italy. So tell me, Aldo, what are the different factors that contribute to the gender pay gap? Well, such factor may be reconduced to three main points. Uh, a greater part of working career, working time, a shorter working career for women due to the fact that they sometimes they need to interrupt their career to care, take care of babies or, or parents. Third point is the development of their career. They sometimes they experience they, the so-called glass ceiling, meaning they are not able due to several constraints to reach the most important position within the company, and sometimes they are segregated in position which are considered more compatible with their condition of uh, caregiver. Okay, and do we see that gap only in the access to the labor market or also at other moments? No, not only to the access of the labor market, even if this is probably uh, the, the, cru the most crucial point. Uh, even if they are able to have access of uh, important position they experience during development of uh, their career within the company certain stop as sometimes they are sacrificed in case people uh, the company try to find redundant employees because of the same reason that uh, rendered in the beginning more difficult the access to the position. Okay, and so what kind of positive actions, policies employers can take to try to help this and to reduce the gap? Well, I think that the most important thing is to try to share the same time between male and female. So not to have only women dealing with certain uh, duty of cure of baby or, or, par or whole parents. So at that point... Uh, uh, it's important for the company to introduce family-friendly policy, such as in order to, par to share this burden over male and female, uh, husband and wives. And can you, can you give some examples of such a policy? What, uh, for what example, are you thinking then? What, what should employers implement in the organization? Well, sometimes uh, they can give to uh, women more flexibility to... Um, to take care of children, not sacrificing their working career. Sometimes it happens that uh, in the same company you have uh, wife and husband and uh, they can be pushed to share uh, their timing of care. Sometimes, even if the same family is, is not within the company, not to push men to avoid taking some parental leave because sometimes it happens that if uh, men try to ask, uh, males try to ask for this kind of parental leaves. They are not well treated because uh, traditionally the cure of the baby is left to, um, to the wife. So in that case, they have to promote an equal cure of the baby. Uh, another thing is uh, ethic code in which all these principles must summarize in order not to create a sort of discrimination against men that decide to help women to take care of children. And also, third point, uh, policy against the harassment the against the discrimination against women. In that case, women need to be in a good position to uh, make statement in case they consider that uh, their career is limited or jeopardized but a sort of discrimination due to the to their role as care, caregivers. That is very important because in that case, women can decide not to uh, stop their career or to accept compromises in order not to lose completely their work. And uh, 
in a certain way, the report that uh, each two years Italian company needs to do is exactly to make a picture of the situation of the company to understand whether equal condition exists for male and female within the company. And one of the things I was thinking, because you were telling of all those positive actions, do you see which a lot of companies, Italian companies, implementing more and more this kind of policies? Is this something which is high on the agenda? Of, uh... If we're talking about the Italian uh, panorama, I can see that more these this policies are implemented the most by the Italian subsidiary of multinational okay. company, while uh, the traditional Italian company are a little bit more resistant to, in, to introduce this change in their policy. Okay. So, yes, Aldo, I think it was very interesting to learn about the gender pay gap in Italy, the measures that are being taken. So, thank you very much for having this talk. Thank you, Sophie. It was very Sophie. nice speaking to you. Thank you. Bye.